Hi, I'm Otto Bravado. And if you'll notice, everyone says that you can't install this without removing the downpipe. Well, I have the downpipe fully installed and this will go together. So for those of you with a 2002 Toyota Crow Chevy Prism, we're back down to 1998. The trick that you've all been missing, sorry if I'm going to make you a little bit sick here, the trick that you've all been missing is that you need a bolt that is extra special. Instead of having this factory bolt that's a 14 millimeter and is nice and thick, what you need to do is get yourself, sorry I don't want a product placement or anything, but Realize gets this from India and it comes with a shank that goes over this, this washer piece, uh, half of them didn't fit, the quality is not that great. But between this and my other aftermarket set from before and the new springs, I have myself the ability from now on to remove my O2 sensor without doing my downpipe. Because when you add the two when you add the two together, we're talking about, you know, at least to me, four or five hours of groveling. Because on the one side of the downpipe, this has to come off for that O2 sensor to come off. Once you change that out, your life becomes a lot easier because having the O2 sensor in and try to install this, oh, doesn't work. It's neither or. You've got to put one in or the other, but you have to have both to have the car. This, making the downpipe go in first, makes it so much easier. I mean, the factory is convenient. It's got all the parts together. You don't have to have a washer. You don't have to have this long metal shank because they put something simple there. But it works. This is probably the roughest I've looked in quite a while. Working lots of hours and trying to deal with this difficult oxygen sensor. Uh, and I, I just got to say, don't look to trouble codes. Actually do diagnosis. I mean, in this case, I'm replacing an oxygen sensor that trouble codes would have never even noticed. Uh, brand new, it was capable of going below 100 millivolts. It's supposed to be between 100 and 900 millivolts. Check out uh, Schrodinger's boxes, uh, explanation of fuel trims, and you can more fully understand that. But really, when it's capable of going below 100 millivolts like it was, I shouldn't even bother to let it run in my car this last year. With that going on, you've got, uh, I would guess, a scale that's a little bit richer. Um, you know, everything seemed fine, everything ran okay, Mile, gas mileage was a little bit poorer. Um, but everything seemed okay. What finally got me to try to change it out is I, my, I noticed last week on the live scan, because I just kind of have a bad habit of running those kind of all the time, uh, I noticed that sometimes my oxygen sensor was stuck lean, sometimes stuck rich. It was nothing that even tripped the PCM. It didn't even realize what was going on. But I knew that it was starting to be aggravated. Thankfully, I did have a uh, warranty for it. I was able to put a new one in for that. And forgive the, the little uh, Samsung Galaxy uh, Class 3 uh, first video. I plan on getting a little better lighting and camera first, but I just couldn't help it. When I saw that simple way to make that job. In 2005 I knew a lot less and I just dealt with uh, those downpipe bulbs. I didn't even know they were on a downpipe. I didn't know it was called that. Uh, and I put in a random aftermarket one. It lasted a really long time for me. But uh, I'm pretty particular about things running just right now. And, and uh, hopefully Hopefully OEM, Denso, doesn't let me down again. Now, was Scotty Kilmer suggesting that Toyota likes Denso. Well, Bosch lasted 10 years. Denso was terrible all year. It just took me a while to admit it with some additional diagnostic skills, uh, being able to wake up and come to the front. So if something doesn't look right when you put it in new, just because it runs right, <laughs> don't let it just go. There are warranties for a reason. I use them more than probably a lot of people. 
but I use them because of diagnostics, so I don't have to feel bad. Hey, yeah, the manufacturer didn't get that one quite right. It happens more than you think. All right. Okay, guys. Here's another trick for you as you're working on that. Whenever you install something like this that has springs, you've got to consider the effect on the X and Y axis has for what you're doing. Well, one of my other struggles was trying to get these bolts to line up and taking a look I thought you know if I tighten one down quite a bit it might make it easier for the other make it easier because it was holding it up no uh, there, it would actually turns out that because it's spring loaded it's gonna load the other spring as you tighten one it loads the other as you tighten one it loads the other back and forth back and forth okay so let's take a look at a couple of easier things to do with that so the couple of changes I made is I took my hydraulic lifter here I got it to push up underneath my downpipe there and uh, be sure to check out my articles on catalytic converter modifications I did on this car I'll leave a link in the description that's uh, a true joy there to get 50 more 50 percent more horsepower just because your catalytic converter is three and a half inches sorry about that alright so you can get a little bit of lift on it with this that'll help hold things together so as you arc your way up here that can kinda help hold things in place and remember the key don't have that uh, spark or that uh, oxygen sensor in place okay because when you do you can't get the bolt that's next to it lined up get these squatter bolts uh, you know they're they're uh, have less depth to them that'll make your life a lot easier now one of the struggles on the top side because a lot of this work is done back and forth above and below is 17 millimeter box hammer wrenches tend to be just too long you keep hitting into what I believe is your speed sensor little wire hanging out on the other side uh, but that can't be helped uh, you can kind of push it aside but don't beat it up too bad or you'll have something else broken come I'll meet you again back up top so I have a good feel for where we're at coming down through here I took off this exhaust shield it made things a lot easier I could see what I was doing I was able to get a lot more penetrating spray to break up the rust a little bit make things more lubricated but as you work your way down over here that's the oxygen sensor that uh, my tool hits and my shorter tool hits some of the struggles I was having I even resorted to using my 17 millimeter at a 45 degree angle that was not taking that socket directly sorry I shouldn't emphasize with the camera just like Brian's mobile one eh? <laughs> All right, so you've got your speed sensor, I believe. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. Um, but don't keep hitting that wire again and again. And of course, you've got your clip, how that hooks together. And how this engine bay normally looks, forgive me, but I've modified a lot. I got this nice, sweet, hot air intake. <laughs> Not really. It's actually, uh, it works out really well in the winter because you can have too cold air. So just put a sock in the original pipe that lets all this cold air in during the winter. Heat things up a little faster. Uh, works really wonders for the MPG because you actually have to have hot enough air. Isn't that the opposite of what those turbo guys always want to tell you? At least the ones that don't know a lot. You come around over here during the summer I had an air intake gets an advantage as long as I'm moving. Otherwise, it gets pretty hot. So, I rather enjoy doing some modifications. But the truth, it, the simple truth is, if you're not looking at live scan data and really knowing what's going on with your car, making a modification might not do any good at all. In my case, the Weapon R Dragon intake works for me. It, uh, it helps me get a little more air in there. Actually, helps me not run rich. Probably have something else wrong to try to get figured out, but 
hey, uh, it gets me a better stoichiometric, gets things running a little bit better. So it works out for me. All right. As much as I'd rather be a Schrodinger's box and, and hardly do nuts and bolts, uh, I might just play to the masses a little bit here. Uh, on this exhaust shield, there appears to only be four bolts holding it, unless you're really paying attention. These ones hide a little bit more. There's a lot, one on this side and one just on the other side as well. So, something Brian's Mobile One taught me, if a part's not coming off, give it a little wiggle, and oftentimes it'll point you where you're going. Since I've settled that into a habit, thanks to him, a little shout out for him, that uh, that bolt was easily found last time I did this job uh, a year ago. First time I did this job in 2005, that oxygen sensor certainly lasted longer than it. When I did this in 2005, I, I didn't touch the exhaust manifold. I knew a lot less. <laughs> and while it is possible to get that exhaust shield off with one of these, don't you hate that? You turn a little, you turn a little. My life got so much easier with these babies. Yeah, they're not reversible. You have to turn them over to reverse them. Yeah, they're zero degrees. Yeah, they're not snap-on. But you know what? Sometimes zero degrees gets you in that place that you can't get in otherwise. Each has a tool has a purpose, and this particular one has uh, is what a lot of people on YouTube call a Harbor Freight Gem. <laughs> oh, and consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Bye.